ready to wrap up our Warriors of God game. And uh, we are at the... Oh, remove disgraced markers. All's forgiven. Oh, no, that ain't it. First, remove all aggressor markers. That's the one we're looking for. All right, so we got an aggressor. One, two, three here. Four battles. The English have taken the lead away from the French. Their help from Joan of Arc uh, playing piece in this game with its modifiers did not help them. French definitely, or the English rather, had some good die rolls. We are ready for control of areas. Let me see here. All right, well, that's easy enough. We know how to do that. Uh, first, we'll go with, uh, we'll start here and work our way up. Henry VI, one of the old territory of, I guess it's in Lim, Limousin, 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 huh. Eight to three or more. I guess that's what it is. Oh, we got here. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Add one to the die for each mercenary troop. Nope. Equal or less. Oh, there is not a leader's home area and the league controlling player rolls one die that is equal or less to the leader's rank. Never, of, uh, if the player has more than one leader. You can choose which one they use. Only one die roll per area. All right, is it one or less or one or more? See, each of these games are different. <laughs> we just change one where it's everything. It's the number and more. This one here, I guess it's a number or less. Let me look at this real quick. We'll be right back. All right, on this table, it is equal to or less. So they'll get control of that area. Henry has to roll a three or less. So we're back to the regular die here. Oh, let's see. We are less. There he gets it. Well, that'll work. That helps out the English. The English are on a roll. So we get some good points for this one. That's only a, one area, but hey, areas are areas. And that helps with those three stars. He's looking for another area. It might be a two rank or not. These are all just one ranks. One value areas, rather. And we're looking for a two or less. More low die rolls for this game. He has no chance. People, local people are not doing him. Local French there are not, uh, what do you call it, conspiring. Oh, I think that's it. We don't have any other areas. Oh, we, well, nope, nope. It's an area without a leader on it. That will be it for the English areas that could be possibly controlled. They gained one. Looking for the French now. Oh, well. There's one where they don't have control. <laughs> huh, what do I do about that there? Uh, let me see, a controlled area. Oh, they address it right away. A controlled area becomes an control if it contains at least one area. So, uh, ask and he shall receive. <laughs> Just look at the uh, rules. This came into effect, uh, so the same uh, situation earlier when I was uh, cooking a recipe. It told me to put a, a pot of water on the burner and, you know, medium pot or something like that and add some stuff to it. Well, it didn't tell me towards till the end that you're supposed to put five cups of water in there. So I put the pot on and I'm like, you know, I'm going to put some water in there and I think it was a soup recipe. Well, what they really wanted me to do was to take the onions and all the other good additives and use the, the, the pot as a frying pan. And if I would have just followed the directions at the end... After I got fried it in a little bit of olive oil, I was supposed to add the water. Yeah, so I, like I said, look, and he shall receive. So that marker comes off. And uh, now we will roll for that area. Uh, both of them, out, those boys are two ranked here. So two or less for one value area for the front. See if they can get some of those points back. Yes, they do. Flip that one over to France. All right. That is it. I don't see any other French units in areas that are not controlled. I see French controlled areas that are not manned, but other than that, that'll be it. We'll move on to, we're getting, we're getting there. 
like I said, this is a good game. I put it. I put the ad on Vassal for this game too. So if anybody would would want to play this one, but uh, once I get locked in on opponents, it's just going to be one opponent, and it'll probably be me and him for a while. Uh, this guy here says he's got time for you know a move a day and stuff like that, which is I said a move a day is fine. You know, I could I, I could probably do a move a day, but some days you won't be able to raise troops and place mercy. Place mercenaries. We have mercenaries here to place. So here we go. Mercenaries. Oh, they're all the way up here. And Ireland is their symbol. So we get to place them. All right. And now we uh, raise troops in our areas. Right back. All right. And as per the recipe story, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So we all go down here at the very end, and it tells us to remove the disgraced markers. All is forgiven, so I can take the disgraced off him and the disgraced off of him. The two Frenchies that were disgraced. Oh, disgraced, disgraced. We'll start with the French on raising troops. It's a three value area. Got gunners. But we need a. Oh, there's a true Frenchman. Let me see what I want to do here. We'll be right back. All right, all right. Well, being that the, they're coming after us. We don't need no gunners, we need we need troop strengths. So in this area here we'll raise our obligatory three. And then over here I think we'll do the same thing. We ain't going on the offense, we're just going on the defense. I just want to get the number of troops, so there will be three there also. Oh one for Orleans. One four. Oh, we got here, Anjou. Oh, and now out of the France. We don't have a king either. We don't have a three-star leader, so we were without a king. I see the king marker is still here for the uh, English, but they do have a three-star leader, so we'll be able to we'll be able to crown a new king here. Uh, out of the France. What are we gonna do? Uh, remember any three star leader may accompany the knight three star leader for a knight we won't be raising him we're, we're just getting troops so we'll get us to three here and that is it for the French areas kind of comes and goes it shrunk this time as for the English it will take one each of our new spots here and here Alright, no more English spots except over there. Oh, English, English got some spots. Alright, we'll take two in Champagne. Three in Flanders. Wow, okay. Two for Normandy. And three for England, but we want to get us some... One of them will be an archer for sure. You always want to do that. And then we'll take two more. But I'm pretty sure that's what we want to do there in England. Uh, get all the archers we can. You always want those archers. So there you go. Up here in England. Alright. Good morning, Wales. English looking good. At the end of the game here. Oh. The more troops. Now you got to have the leaders so grab the troops but other than that that is it uh, now what we can do is move on to phase six and deploy troops and recruit mercenaries so if I'm in an area that's next to available mercenaries it might be an option for the French uh, deploy troops and that is I can move troops around we want to get a bunch of troops over there for uh, old Joan of Arc that is one key thing we got. So do we want to put a bunch of troops with her? She's got four. Yeah, we can get up to six troops with her. Well, more than six. Yeah, you want more than six with her. All right, we're going to move some troops around. they got to move around the neighboring connected uh, controlled territories. We'll be back. One key aspect of this de deployment, and it's one thing I thought about, is I want to transfer troops under a certain leader over to Joan. That is not allowed. And it addresses it right here. Please note, leaders and troops under their command may not deploy during this phase. Only unassigned troops may deploy, so you only move around the ones that don't have leaders on them. Be back. For the French, 
We will move three out of Idle to France. She's maxed. We need to get her at least seven, at least seven troops. Uh, also, we moved uh, a troop out of Champagne into Burgundy. I think he can max uh, six. He's only got three, so he's got room. And that should take care of the French deployment. We'll see what the English want to do. They have to be connecting areas, though, that are controlled. Those areas isolated won't be doing it there. We could do it here to here. And only from here to here. This one here doesn't go across the channel for some reason. Everyone, everyone on each side does, but boy, they can't get it to this one. That's kind of a game, uh, a game quirk, or maybe a game. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's historically. Maybe there's a bunch of cliffs or something there. You never know. But they do a good job in this game for, for some reason. You cannot transport across the English Channel there. All right, we're gonna deploy troops if possible for any English. All right, I think the only movement I'm gonna make here. For the English, and these boys here are all maxed out for three. They have no room for these troops, so hopefully we get some English leaders to take care of them for place them there in the upcoming phase. But uh, he's got room. Well, no, he don't. He's only he's only a three rated. Oh, what was I looking at there? One, two. He's only got room for one. We will. I want to bring this troop over here anyway. If he's only got room room for one more troop. I want it to be a long movement instead of we can lose these boys. We, we should lose C. He's only a three, and he's got his maximum two. Huh. I'm going to move these troops over here. Hopefully, we'll get some leaders coming in that can help us out, take some of those. But other than that, that is what we're going to do. Deployment phase over. Recruit mercenaries. Uh, we don't have room for mercenaries. Yeah, we do here. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll take our two mercenaries. Yes, 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 yes. We'll take two mercenaries here. He has no room for any. Or he would take some. He has no room for any either. Oh, that was it for anybody that is next to a territory with mercenaries. So there you go. The French have hired some. Yeah, we'll take some mercenaries with him. Ain't worry about recruitment. All right, that will be it. We will move on now to phase 7 of 11. Depose of captured leaders. Exchange. Now what you're supposed to do is exchange them if you have to, if you can. And it should be an even exchange. Uh, if it is possible to make an even exchange based on the number of captured stars, not the number of captured leaders, then players must exchange as many stars as possible. If there's a different possibility for even Exchange and initial player decides what the leaders are exchanged. Even exchange, yeah. The players must, yeah, so we don't have to because there's not the same stars. Exchange leaders go through this turn's routed leaders box. Yeah, we're not exchanging, so they won't be over, so sorry. Nothing going on there. Um, now you can ransom them. Uh, exchange a leader for a two value area and this leader for a three value area nobody's going to do that i don't see that at all happening and that, that leader's not that good on either side although henry was the king <laughs> was the english king do they want to give away a three value area for their king oh no i don't think so but if i think those stars are going to go against them on the uh shoot what if i'm I don't, we don't have no three. Oh, yeah, we, no, we don't. We got Flanders. Do we give away Flanders to get our king back? Wow. Oh, uh, we're going to roll the dice on this one. Be right back. All right. Well, I was going to roll the dice, but I'm thinking of myself as a player that would be playing somebody else. And look at old Henry. You know, Coot anyway. About ready to kick the butt. He's got six. There's no way he survives to the next, <laughs> to the next turn. Guess what, Henry? you be left to rot. All right. So, yeah, we're not going to do that exchange. All right. So, we have done all that. We'll go through the determined leader death phase. Oh, my goodness. We will start with the French. A seven leader nowadays on turn number 11. Oh, let me go up here. It's a one or four. Wow. Be tough times. And a 1400s leaders moving on 
one to four four seven liter. That's our board right there. All right, let me give my guys here. One, two, four. Oh, he's good. But the, I'll just put the die on him. Make sure I know who we got and who I haven't got. All right, he's a 10. So he just needs a one. Yep, just a one for him. Anything but a one rather than this game. There you go, he lives. That's good. This face here could definitely decimate your side. Okay, well, Joan of Arc with the nine. Over here, nine. One or two. Could be a chance there. Could be a chance. What happens to the star of the game? Oh, she is history. Wow, that was a good leader. I think there goes any chance of the French winning this game. I think we could just crown the. Might as well stop it here. Uh, so, there she is. She is gone. Oh, Joan, we hardly knew you. You were, uh, in this game here, unlike history, she didn't get captured. She died, died of natural causes or, or something, but she is out of my game. There you go, Joan of Arc, gone. It wasn't, I think, any chance of a French victory. Let's go up here to number 10. All he needs is a one. And what happens? He's seen Joan just die, and all these troops are just roused down. He just needs a one. <laughs> all right, well, he lives. He's good. He is good. Another 10 liter there. Leading the troops in France. Does the plague hit him also? He just needs a one. Oh, he's good. He's good. That is it for French leaders. Wow, we're getting down to it. All right, more uh, English leaders than French. What do I got a leader over there for? Oh, he's in the routed box. We'll bring that leader back on here when the routed box comes. Okay, that'll work. Well, was I supposed to do that already? All right, we'll go through this and I'll look back there and see if I, oh, we gotta get one more. Oh, Felipe in jail. Does he die in the Tower of London? What a, what a way to go. I was watching Mark Feldon today I'm sure you guys who watch this channel might know him. and they were talking about uh, uh, one of Hitler's relatives Hitler's relatives and Stalin's relatives and how they had to go fight on the front lines and oh boy I guess the name don't get you nowhere and they ended up getting captured and uh, boy I'll tell you what they were left to rot and uh, Hitler wanted to make a uh, exchange for his nephew, for uh, Stalin's son or something like that. It might have been Stalin's nephew, but Stalin said no. He goes, and, and to basically pretty well said, the idiot got himself taken prisoner, fuck him. <laughs> God. So yeah, the, so Hitler's son had said, or Hitler's nephew died in Russian prison and it told, it told you right off the bat that he died of mistreatment. So, oh, or he died in, you know, shush. Some lives, boy. Some lives. All right, what are we at here? We are at the, uh, oh, rolling for Felipe. Did we roll for Felipe yet? Okay, we're going to roll for him. A nine. He is just looking for a one or two with a nine. Yep, one or two with a nine. His suffering comes to an end. Oh, he's still got to go. He's still in there. All right. What do we do here? We'll go up here to a 10. We need a one for Henry, the sixth. Henry's good, Henry's good. An eight, I guess that's a one, two, or three. Looking away real quick. Yeah, one, two, three. One, two, three for eights. Oh, the eight liter. Gone. Yeah, like I said, this turn here can be can decimate your your board. All right, next we're going for a ten. He just needs a one. Let me see ten. Yeah, just needs a one. Or got one on one rather. Yeah, he's good. He's good. That's a ten leader, William Up de la Pole. Next leader. 
One or two for John Talbot. One or two is a number John Talbot does not want to see. He's good. He's good. Another one for the mercenary general, John D. Is that Luxembourg or Lugenberg? I can't see it. Just a one. That's all he's got to worry about. Good odds. Oh, bad odds for him. He's got my luck. All right, well, he's out of here. Mercenary general gone. All right, well, evening up on the generals here, on the leaders around. I keep on calling them generals. They're leaders in this game. Thomas Montacute. Nine, I guess he's looking for a... Uh, Oh, one or two. One or two. Oh, no. Oh. Montecute is gone. No good, no good. English getting hit with the plague or something this turn. All right, one or two for the old boy in England. And that could be a killer. This is the death die. I killed everybody and it keeps going. Wow, wow. Oh, we got him. He is gone. Whew. Man. All right, well, here's the leader stack. I think the English might have more leaders. Natural leaders. Not that it means anything, but it looks like their leaders have been uh, the natural leaders. Maybe one more, but we got Joan of Arc who passed away. Oh, that is it. We're going to take away. Oh, we got one more in here. Six. He's, he ain't going to make it. Oh, that's the old king with a six. Is he automatically dead? No, he rolls a one through four. One through five. Six. Down here, there, one through five or six. Six is right below it. Yep, there you go. For the English king, he lived long enough. What a way to go, though! No chance for him. <laughs> All right, that is bad news. He died in jail. Well, at least we don't have to take, worry about points for him either. That's pretty, that's, that'll work. Uh, I guess the English are celebrating that one as far as game points go. All right, well, let me take these boys on off and we will continue after this to uh, uh, out with the old and with the new. Be back. All right, last group of leaders come in. And I think this might not be an 11 turn game. I think it's just the fact that uh, these leaders come on, but. Uh, they won't be able to come on in the next turn? I'm not sure, but anyway. Turn 11 leaders, and we'll be turning this, or we we'll are moving this turn counter over to 12 here after this. So we'll come on up. We got these uh, old boys that were routed. He comes on first also. Now he might change sides. So we'll see what's up with the... Anybody that's black is a mercenary that can change sides. What kind of leaders we got late here in the game? Nothing, really. Ooh, here's a name to take a Richard Planta, oh, Planta Gannett, huh, Richard Planta Gannett, wow, there you go, a little bit of bravery and a big old, old boy's a Welshman, I guess, from Wales, all right, and we have these that can change sides, this can change sides, oh, look what we got here for the French, hello to Jean... Jean Barreau Barrio Barrio Huh, yeah, we like him All right, That could be a chink game change You don't see threes often in this game But He's only rolling one die <laughs> Oh shit, he's only rolling one die What is less No matter what he's got, he's only rolling Oh my god We'll see what happens with that Alright, we got Uh Oh, wait, here's another one. Oh, he came back because he was routed. So uh, he's not a uh, mercenary. He's a natural Frenchman. So we get to place him. All right. And for the rest of the English. Oh, no, here is the uh, mercenaries. 
ooh, we got a good mercenary general. Like, why are we a little short of general for the for the English? Oh, Richard. We need to look somewhere around here. Is another eleven general? Well, be right back. All right, we got him. He was in the pile. We just misplaced him, so we caught that one. And he is not a bad uh, lot at all for English. Like I said earlier, I think the game uh, is an English to lose right now, and this pretty much solidifies it with these leaders. These are some nice leaders here. That first leader, that first number is always good if it's a, anything but a two, but these back numbers, especially this back number here with the extra troops, and then this fat number back here, Torres, this guy's braver and I'll get up, but no matter what, he's only rolling one <laughs> die. Yikes. That's good for nothing. All right. Well, the uh, non-initiative player can take the mercenary. So, Charles, you're turning on blue general. We like that. And there's another three-er. But again, only two freaking. I don't know. We'll see what's up. So, we'll move him over here. And you'll go to your new home over here. All right. That is it. We get four to place. Because one was in the routed box. All right, getting down to it. Uh, what are we doing on the clock here? Okay, we got plenty of time. And uh, me and a girl from around there, Outback, and a uh, little bad shout out for Outback. wasn't a, It wasn't their best night. As a matter of fact, there were some people outside debating. I can hear them talking if they wanted to go in or not. Or, you know, do we go to this place? Or we go somewhere else because it was kind of a wait. We got there early. We ate at around four, and uh, didn't have no wait at all. There was a line when we when we left. And I told them, too, I said, well, I go, this ain't their best night. There was a long wait for food, really long, where the guy had to come out and tell us, sorry about the wait. They had, they said it was some computer glitch, what a computer has to do with baking your food. <laughs> you got a piece of paper that tells you what the people want at what table, so I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so I did. Yeah, mine was great. Mine was fantastic. The girls, girlfriends wasn't that good. I had a steak and lobster tail, and I'm telling you, oh, lobster tails. Whew. I love me some of that. But, uh. I don't know what the hell I was going with this story. So anyway, I'm going to get off of here. Uh, oh, we were talking about uh, New Year's Eve. Well, she said the same thing I did. She was if she's able to stay up. She's working now. She usually does work on a Saturday night. That poor girl works seven days a week. But uh, uh, she's hoping when she gets home we can stay up. I want to put a build a fire on in the deck. And, yeah, well, the, the, a guy next door will definitely be shooting off fireworks. So we'll enjoy that. The dog will be taking cover. But other than that, happy New Year. We do still have some playing time left. When we come back, it will be a uh, leader placement. We got a bunch of troops without leaders. See where they go. Be right back. All right, as far as placing leaders, we put all uh, the new French king, too, it looks like, because he's a three raider. Oh, uh, it is Louis, the 11th. And Louis's got a fat little number there with him. He could take uh, uh, five. He's got, he's got a five number here. He can take up to... Nine troops, we'll put him there. He can take care of most of those troops there in that Anju area. All right, now for the rest of my leaders, I'm putting them in their home spot places so they're able to raise some of my local troops with a little uh, local entourage equal to their star. So he's got a one. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Pulled a little bit of a cheat on him, didn't I? He got a one and he can bring two. So he'll bring his leader here. He'll go in his home area of Orleans, which is an area we control. So we like that. It works out real good. Although he ain't much of a leader, but we'll see. Uh, this next leader here comes from out of the France, the capital. He's got his one unit he can bring with him, and that helps. There ain't no more troops there. Last but not least, old Charles is from Burgundy, I'm guessing. Yep. We got a bunch of troops in Burgundy. Uh, he, he's bringing an entourage of two troops with him. We can maybe pick up some of those troops there, but uh, there you go. That'll be it for the policemen of the French leaders. We'll see what we want to do with the uh, English leaders. Be right back. All right, our old mercenary for hire, General Edmund Buford. He wants to, he's from Normandy. We'll give him a local troop. Count of one, equal his rank, and we'll bring him in at his home spot. There's some other troops there too. We might want to throw in with him. He's got a capacity of three, so we definitely want to take. Don't want to lose that longbowman. 
Or we could put some other troops down in there too. We can see what's up here. Richard Novell from. Where are you from, Richard? Oh, I gotta find that coat of arms. He's from Picardy. All right, that's not controlled. We got a bunch of troops we need to um, get leaders with. So he won't go to Picardy. He'll be going to Flanders instead. Uh, he won't. He's only got a capacity of three, so we're still gonna lose three troops. But now this is a good leader here to put, put down. He's got a capacity to carry six with him. He comes from Wales. There's already one there. He could bring two with him on Wales. Let me see what we need him. We need him in England now. Yeah, we can't lose all those troops in England. So I'm afraid he's got to go there by himself. So Richard will go into England. Where's the three-star guy at? Oh, that was with the uh, that was with the French. I'm sorry. All right, so Richard, the Welshman, going into England because the leader Darren was died of natural causes or unnatural. Either way, he was gone. That will take care of uh, leader placement. Now we get to put dispose of the leaderless troops real quick. And uh, let me do that. Look around. Find out who is left without a chair. Or who just can't find employment. Because uh, they can only afford so much. We'll be right back. Alright. The troops that cannot find leaders. Or uh, find employment. Here you go. A bunch of them here. You know. Uh, pull A2. Or whatever it's called. <laughs> Pull point to you or whatever. Alright, there's those troops. One here, if it's Henry, he can absorb. Uh, English are the ones that lost the most. I think uh, French took care of most of theirs. We got two we're losing here. Three up here. One here. England was able to take all their troops. So they didn't lose no longbowmen or nothing. I'm pretty sure these are all English. Uh, soldier wannabes. Going home without employment. So there you go, big old pile. We will move on from the leaderless troop phase to phase 11, adjusting the score. This will be the second last one, I think. But uh, we're getting down to it. Uh, let me look here, make sure that this game ends. Uh, scenario place that says blah blah. From Ray Marcus, the Alien Pulse track. Don't say nothing about ending. I think it ends at. Uh, 12 turns, so I guess it is 12 turns. Uh, we will be moving to the 12th turn here in a second. Be back to adjust the score after we get rid of some troops and do a little bit of house cleaning. We'll be right back. All right, moving on, ready to adjust the score. English with a three victory point lead. They'll go first. Uh, they don't control the opposite, they don't, they don't control the opposition's capital. Easy for me to say, and I haven't even been drinking. <laughs> we don't really do that. Uh, control of an area with a value of three. They don't have that many of those either. The only one they have is England. Oh, and Flanders. So we'll start off with a four on the victory point. Guy Abacus. Oh, got to stop. I'm out of battery power. We'll be back. All right, a quick charge to finish up the video. We're at four points. A control of area one or two be one point. They have control of one, two, three, four. So add another four to this, giving them an eight for the English. All right. I make three star leader killed this turn. Nope. No leaders killed, or else we put them on the track. Enemy king killed. No, there was one that was captured, though. Huh. Killed, enemy two leader killed, and this is all about the killed, so no, no kills, but what a capture. Enemy leader captured in your leader box, which is, ours was, but not anymore, but we do have one of those, so we get a point per star. One point per star. So we will go up another eight, nine, ten. And this could be, this could do it, unless the French can pull something out. Uh, that'll be it. So they have three points now. We'll shoot them up 10 to 13. There you go for the English. J 
Joan of Arc did not come into effect, and she pretty well was coming gone on the stage in this game. And, you know, every, every game is going to be different. It's all playability, but it is interesting. It makes for a really good game. And uh, uh, don't look now, but I have got replies out the yin-yang from my vassal ad. Uh, they're coming in heavy and strong now. I'm going to have to turn some of these guys down. Uh, one, The latest one wants to play me in a game of uh, Empires of the Sun, which we just got. But I told him it's going to take a while. You know, I'm, you know, something like that. I'm going to have to learn. I, he says he's learning the game, too. We can start off with an easy scenario. But, yeah, this might be a, this might be a uh, non-solo season. Uh, we'll be back for the French response. Might have to wait till tomorrow, though. It might be celebration time. We'll be back. All right, then. It is the next day. Happy New Year! <laughs> and uh, I was awake during New Year's, but just for a second. I think because the... Uh, uh, well, no, I think I woke up around 11.47. Just out of, you know, you know randomly. And I uh, looked up, and there was no way I was getting up. I was way too comfortable. <laughs> but uh, we did hear the... Fireworks and I got like I said I got a neighbor who puts on a good show. He put on a bunch of he, he lived up to his uh reputation. He shot off a bunch of good fireworks. Like would have been nice to sit outside. My uh illusions of grandeur were to be out on a deck having a nice fire and to bring in the new year. But I even went upstairs with a girlfriend around seven eight o'clock and she looked at me. <laughs> Her eyes were halfway shut. She goes I ain't gonna make it. I'm like I ain't either. I'm gonna give it a try. So yeah, this is about the another year. I think the past. Oh, shoot, I can't remember when I celebrated New Year's. It's had to have been years back, I, before memory. We're all sleeping. But uh, it is a bright new day. We're up and at it. Got a bunch of stuff done already, and I'm coming down here to finish this, uh, try to finish this game. We just got done figuring out the victory points for the English, and now we're ready for the French. So let's go ahead and do this. They get two points for the three-point areas. They got one in Burgundy, an Idle de France, and... Aquatine or whatever, so that gives them a six. Uh, what do I get? Two points per, so that gives them six to start off with. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now they get one for all the all the other ones. One point for all the other ones. So it'll be one, two, three. That's all I see. No, only two. That's right. I counted uh, out of France. Only two. So it'll go from uh, six see here oh I gotta pause this all right so it'd be one two three four five six seven eight so they've got eight points victory points here no king killed no enemy leader captured this turn so uh, we're in our uh, what do you call it jail all right so eight points down so let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That leads it with a six point lead. That's a nice lead in this game, considering it's turn 11. So it could be, uh, unlike my first game, like I said, my first game, I was over there, to, I was able to go over there and get England for the French. And the French won a victory with 30 points, victory points. <laughs> so it was a good game. That was a good game. It's just, they're all different. This one here is going to be a little bit more of a nail biter, but I think the. British just uh, made it their game to lose. All right, so that is it for the adjusted score phase. We're going on to, oh, ta-da, turn number 12. And like I said, this has been a good game. I didn't, I broke this out a long time before, but uh, I can't remember how, you know, from one day to the next, and it turned out to be a, a oldie but goodie. We're enjoying the heck out of this, and uh, like I said, there's a lot of uh, historical characters you could probably look up on and read all kinds of biographies about them. We're ready for the uh, determination phase, initiative determination phase. And the, uh, oh, you know what we have to do though? Let's go back here. We're forgetting one important thing. And I don't have to look through the rules because I already know to, what to do with it, but uh, we we're supposed to, we're supposed to put our king, crown of king. So for the English. It'll be Henry the Sixth. Will be their new king, and for the French, they got a new king themselves. And it will be Louis the Eleventh. Huh, XI, I guess. I can see right. But there you go. 
new leaders this turn. And that should have been done in, let me see here real quick. I think that was when you place your leaders phase. We forgot to do that. Oh, where are we at here? Terminary control. Deploy troops, mercenaries. Uh, where are we at here? Oh, give my nights, blah, 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 blah. Only blah, blah, blah. Where do we put the new king? Oh, leader exchange, leader death. All right. Okay, it would have been a leader placement priority, so it was just one behind the depose of leaderless troops. But aside without a king for any reason, a kingless player may simply place a king marker in any friendly three star leader of his choice. So yeah, we're good to go. They both got leaders now before we moved on to the next turn. Because if your leader is in your home territory, in this scenario, 100 years of war, you get a modifier on your initi or initiative determination die roll. We don't have any leader in our home spot, so none of them will get that. If you don't have a leader, it's a negative minus one die roll modifier. So both rolling for initiatives with no modifier. One for the English. They could bruise it this turn. Five, all right. So we will have the French as the initiative leader. We take the losing die roll one, add two, so that's only going to be a three impulser for this turn. And an English leading, coming up, bringing up the rear with only two. All right, that sets the stage for this last turn. Like I said, it's going to be a tall order for the French to, I guess they're going to have to hold the English to zero, and they got to get a gain of seven, so it ain't looking too good. We'll be back when we continue with play. It will be... The uh, ooh, movement phase, but I don't know what they call it in this game. Uh, let me see here, real quick. Uh, conduct a seed, no. It is the conduct an action impulse. So we'll be doing that real quick. I'll be back. All uh, right, back here at Lanzarath. And uh, I was messing with this game late last night. It's one of the good things about being in the off season. You turn into a night owl, <laughs> up all night, sleep all day. But, uh, and I wanted to come back and film our video, what's going on here now, because it's kind of getting key. I wanted to make another note about the game. And it's whenever you, uh, before you even play these games, you should go to the back of, of these and check out these, these design notes. They're definitely worth reading and uh, brings the game a lot more to life. Uh, all kinds of good stuff back here. And, you know, these guys went through a lot of work and research. I think this guy was talking about how he started researching on this one. Oh, you know, his first year or year back, and I'm like, you know, just trying to get into a design of my own game. There is a lot that goes into it. I mean, I, I could give up all this gaming to start getting into my game, which I really should do, but I need the whole table. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, my hobby store uh, doesn't have uh, hex hexagon paper. Yeah, that's one thing I was. I asked him about. He's, he said maybe they have it online, so I have to look. But yeah, I need to be some big hex paper. I want to go bigger hexes than that regular standard hex. But other than that, it's all another story. But there you go. These are all really nice design notes about the battle and his sources he used to design the game. And you could look up some of this stuff. It's, it's all makes for good reading. Now, if I, who's got time for reading? Is which is true. I spend most of my time working and maybe getting a little bit of gaming in, much less reading. Like I said, in the retirement years, that's maybe what retirement's about. And that's one thing about when we were up at my uh, gaming store, and uh, the, the guy at the counter told me, he goes, they, they've been playing war games in the back room there, and I, I wasn't really interested. I looked around, my girlfriend even said something. She was like, you know, everybody around here has got gray hair. <laughs> like, just, for being a gaming store, you'd think it'd be a bunch of young kids, but it really isn't. This is really a, uh what do you call it a baby boomers or not even a boomers hobby but yeah we're all getting gray this is not a children's hobby although on some of these uh channels you do see you know younger maybe teens or younger playing these games but and but some of them are probably really good at it They'll probably kick my butt all right well i'm gonna get down here because i'm gonna show you this we're coming down to the last wave 
and here's what we look like here. We got my machine gun at our exhaust, and that's another thing. All these guys have uh, corresponding uh, pictures, which is really cool. I guess you couldn't get a picture of everybody, but yeah. We got these guys over here exhausted. My front line is exhausted. It's a good thing it's the last wave because there you go. Exhausted, exhausted. Now, um, it is my turn for my last five uh, defense activations. And I'll show you what's going on right here. Now, another thing is I did use one of these machine guns. These high calibers pretty much clear these guys out. These guys aren't really that hard to clear out. I mean, you got to roll their number. There's been a couple of times that I've failed, but yeah, we got a little bit of a gap before they get to their uh, positions here. They're right up against it there. But it is, and this one here we cleaned out pretty good. I know there ain't nothing going on in this route, I think, for. I think historically they said they were all coming into the center, and then finally they overtook the Americans by outflanking them. What I also wanted to show you in here. Uh, and uh, the designer was big, he said, on this map. And this map is good. If you didn't know better, you'd think it was 3D. So they did an excellent job on the map. Uh, oh, design notes. They actually give you pictures of what the area looked like. There you go. And you can see here the road comes on up. And I'm thinking it splits here. V's. And that might be, oh, where would that be here? Come on up. Maybe there's a, a split here that comes up. It's a V. I don't know. But anyway, there's a farmhouse and stuff. You'd have to, you'd have to look at the illustrations and the map. You see, there's that V again. You got a big V in there on all these maps. Here it is again. So I'm trying to see where that would be. The only one I can see is right there. So there you go. But, uh, yeah. Definitely interesting game. And uh, thank you to the developers for putting in all that work. And it wasn't a bad price either <laughs> compared to Compass Games. <laughs> uh, well, like I said, uh, old uh, Gilbert's game wasn't that bad. Huh, I wonder what that World War One game I think I was looking at was called In the Trenches or something like that. And it was a thicker box, but it was... Ninety dollars or so. Oh, I don't know. I mean, yeah, maybe sometime, but not this time of year after Christmas. All right. Now, like I said, for less than that, I got. Well, no, I think I spent one hundred fifty. I got three games. Three games for one hundred fifty. All right. What we got going on here? It is our activation phase, and one of the things I want to do is uh, use this artillery shit because that gives me a chance to maybe get rid of these last three cards of this wave and uh, if that happens uh, we would survive we got one more card draw to see if we can uh, you know tough it out or whatever survive the onslaught uh, not too bad here now there's four waves coming I don't see how anybody's going to survive that I'm sure they get worse each time but um, let me take a pause here we'll get ready to uh continue with play I'll let you see what goes on with this last turn before we go on to the second wave another thing with this game is it's it gets a little bit more interesting because he starts putting in objectives for the for the US players that goes on so I guess once you if you're gonna survive the initial onslaught you might they might give you some wiggle room or something out to see how that works out but there are objective cards and if you want to uh, make the game to give it more playability or replayability they do have a variant. And uh, with these tactic cards, it's supposed to make it harder. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, let's see, we got um, back here. They do have variants. They got it for competitive play. You can play with somebody else. Full strength setup. Prepare your tactics card. Play attacker and tactics cards. But uh, here's your variants. This gives you a little bit more of a difficulty. It's a veteran difficulty. And I think I've seen this somewhere before, how you, how you can uh, increase the difficulty with the cards in another game. It might have been a DVG game. But if you don't, if you want to go up even further, you go up to Elite Difficulty. And uh, it tells you what they're doing. And I'm pretty sure these tactics, I'm, I've read about it somehow. They're, it's some kind of an AI-coordinated attack. It makes things a little bit easier. Because, you know, right here, 
why wouldn't it just go on up in there? You know, it's just a matter of a die roll. They're right there. Give it some MG42 support. Boom, you're in. But it's a game. All right, we'll be right back. Hey, just want to give a shout out and say Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> it is New Year's, well, New Year's Eve day. And uh, we got, I got a lot of stuff I got to do. And uh, hopefully stay awake for uh, the changing of the year. <laughs> we are always asleep around here. No matter, I mean, she's got to work. And she gets off probably about a half an hour, an hour before midnight. She's got to work tonight, but uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to take us a afternoon siesta or something. Make sure we're good to go for the for the evening. They'll be shooting off fireworks. I'm sure the dogs are all, you know, have a rough night. But uh, yeah, ready ready to get rid of 22. I don't know. It's about 22. It wasn't wasn't one of the better ones. I think 21 was better. All I'm looking forward to 23. But uh, I it wasn't too bad. I had to make a emergency vehicle purchase. That kind of nailed on things but hey we got through it and uh, now we're loving life with a uh what do you call it a more of a fuel efficient vehicle like i said i'm, I'm big on trucks and all those gas guzzlers <laughs> and with the times the way they are i thought i might have to tighten up a little bit i i, I work away so i work about a half an hour drive it ain't bad in the morning it's nobody's up road to myself on an evening yeah always got to have a little bit of that traffic jam but let's get back to the game here we are we are going to use our first action to try to get rid of the last three cards you can do that by doing this we'll have a major action the offender can take a major action exhausted offender to discard all the radio tokens from the artillery jeep to the supply for each radio token I only have one discarded roll one six sided die if at least one of the die roll is five or six, discard three cards from the top of the current attacker's card deck. If the artillery jeep is damaged, you must roll six to be successful. So we're going to do that. We're going to go over here to old Springer. He's right there at that naked artillery jeep. We're only able to put one call in on him, so we'll put this on him. He'll be exhausted because it's a major action. <laughs> Going over and calling artillery. Docks these guys out to where they're laying on the ground. Can't even move. All right. Uh, we'll take this and put it in the supply. I'm going to roll a six out of dice to try to come up with a five or a six. First, oh, sorry about that. Yeah, there you go. Uh, five or six. First artillery strike of the game. Oh, you couldn't ask for anything worse. Was that a big no from the headquarters or what? All right, well, that knocks out that plan. So now we got four more uh, defensive actions. And I've been saying through here that we'll be done with the waves. It's only the first wave we're going to be done with. Uh, we got, you know, one more wave, of, one more attack of the first wave. And uh, there's four waves here. So uh, I'm celebrating because it's my first playthrough. And uh, I think we might not lose the game in the first turn. Uh, another thing you always want to make sure of are these attributes. I think I've been trying to get a whole art. Uh, keep track of them pretty good. I don't think I've missed anything. They can help when it, the die roll is shooting. And all the other stuff. There's certain ways certain guys can get guys unexhausted. Some guys can't get If you're a captain or if you're an officer, I guess you can't get an officer unexhausted. I don't know. So you have to look into it. But uh, we gotta see what we wanna do here now. Like I said, whoa, this spot here, not looking good. Gacky could still do something, although he's got a, oh, he'll roll one D6, okay, one D6. He'll roll another D6. We gotta beat these area values, which is a three and a three, so we got a 50-50 chance. That's probably gonna be our first thing we, we're going to do. Oh, I'm going to have to go out for breakfast here in a little bit. So I don't know if I'll get a chance to do it here now. Let me, uh, I've got a couple chores. I want to get up from the table, but if I get back here real quick, uh, I'm going to look over my options. I've got four more defensive actions remaining. And uh, I think I want to get the pressure off of area three and four. We'll see how we're going to do that. We'll be right back. All right, I want to make a little game note. And when I was uh, 
looking at this game earlier, it had 2021 on there. That's the latest edition. This game's really quite old. I think it's from, it originally came out in 2013 or 15, maybe. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's an older game. Now, one thing that I had a question about was, uh, Mark Herman. I, I, I guess he's, was he an ex Navy officer or something? <laughs> he does a lot of golf strikes. He's, he's big into the naval aspect. So if you want to get into your Pacific motif, we've been doing that with Midway Solitaire and we got that Pacific Storm on the, uh, computer for getting ready to play. That's a slow game. That game goes by by the hour. And, uh, yeah, you have to kind of fast up that timer and keep get it going. So, but you don't really want to miss nothing, and you want to build things up. So that uh, Pacific Storm video game, highly recommended, detailed. And uh, another aspect of that Pacific Storm video game is when it comes time to the battle, to do battles, you can actually get in a plane or get on the ship, and it, it's got a, a third person view or first person view. It's really good. It's a, it's a deep game. But to get back here, uh, old Mark with this Pacific War. Uh, themes, and like I said, it's well, his latest is Roman, so I won't say it's his. It's maybe got off the Pacific aspect for a while, but uh, what is the difference between Empire of the Sun and Pacific War? Well, the difference is Empire of the Sun's a CDG. It's got a lot of that. It's a it's got a lot of that labyrinth type of uh, you know card-driven aspect to it. All right, and Pacific War is more of a hex encounter game, uh, more of a simulation, I would say. Yeah, so if you want the simulated type game, go for Pacific War. If you want something that's more car driven and more solitaire friendly, go to Empire in the Sun. And uh, so like I said, his latest is looks great. It's uh, on that uh, what is that? Great Battles of History. And that can be complicated too, but not too bad. I mean, nothing. None, none of this is that bad. It's just a matter of getting to, you know, learn it. How many uh, um, options do you want to make? Do you want to make it just where this guy rolls against this guy, or this guy's got foot fungus? <laughs> He's got a foot fungus die roll. Uh, there's the winds blowing to the east. You have an east die roll. You know, you can get optionals. You can get really detailed. Uh, Sorry about that. Had a phone call come in. All right. So, yeah, like I said, that's basically what you're doing with these games. It's just, you know, how detailed do you want to get, how many die rolls you want to get. And in my game that I'm getting ready to make, uh, I'm thinking about a bigger hex deal. But if you want to have a bigger hex deal, you want to maybe do a block game. I'm not, I don't want to do a block game. I'm just My first game is going to be regular hex encounters. But uh, I do like the aspect of having hex side capability how many uh, yeah, what's the one thing I learned in that uh, Columbia games is uh, how many units can go through a, a certain hex side that's the one theme I'm thinking about and uh, I'd give up my general theme of what my game's going to be about but I want to give it away nobody's nobody's done a game on it before and it is a great subject uh, I'll give you a little hint it's a civil war subject and that's another thing old Gilbert this original game, his first game was about uh, the Revolutionary War. One would have thought that would have been a Gettysburg game, for sure. We'll be back. Alright, we gotta go, we gotta go. Cars on the way, and uh, we got things to do. Presents to exchange. Uh, somehow I got doubles on a couple of my gifts. Uh, unfortunately, they weren't war games. They are more, you know, along the clothing line. We gotta go take them back, but uh, yeah. Hmm, might have to take him back for some cash. <laughs> Stop by the old hobby store again. But, uh, yeah, and it, she's on our way, so I gotta get going here. We want to, at first, we're going to do us a little, little defensive action, defensive action. Oh, defensive action. Adjust fire, attack. It's going to be a major action. I got something underneath this book. I gotta find all my tweezers. Alright. We will attack. Uh, who will we attack with? Geki. Gay. Gay Kai. I don't know, bad on names. Sorry about that, Gay Kai. Appreciate your service to our country. Oh, um, he will go here. He will be exhausted. But first, I roll a d6. Let me make sure everything's good here. 
Uh, declare, roll the defender's combat value dice and compare the result to defense value. All right, we're good. That will be a D6. We got a good D6s. We got over dice over here now. We got our eights, our tens, our sixes, and our twelves in this game. And we are looking for to get this grenadier. I guess I'm not sure. Uh, he is in a three spot, so we got a one through fifty fifty chance. You know, I guess three or greater. One. Oh, that's not going to do it. Roll defender's combat die uh, compared to resolve defender's value space. At least one of the die roll is equal. Oh, he's got one d6, yeah. Equal arc seeds the attacker's combat defense value. No good. So Geiki does not do anything to help us out. And he will exhaust him. All right. We got to fire again. Oh, Weebin. We'll fire a d6. He'll go for his officer, his leader. Come on up here against us. But he's exhausted. Can't help me out. <laughs> he's laying on the ground. <laughs> Can't do nothing. <laughs> Shot his gun. And he's exhausted. Um, it might be a better uh, uh, expression to use than exhausted. You know, I mean, is the guy really exhausted from pulling a trigger? I mean, I know combat was bad. You know, but maybe, I don't know about that. Maybe a different, maybe, you know, his action's already been used. He was busy. Or something, I don't know. All right, he is rolling. We're rolling one d six. We need the same thing, three or more. Ooh, we get it that time. So the leader is gone. All right, now if I would have fired at him again, this guy here, I would have had to add a one to it. So that was my first shot. The leader will be put back into the leader pile. There's only two leaders there. All right, exhausted, and he needs to have a marker put on him. Old Weeburp. Exhausted. And, oh, I'm not showing you right. And there you go. Took off the officer. We have got two more ready to go here. And uh, let me look over my actions. I better end up getting ready uh, to go. We will have to do this a little bit later. We got all night tonight. Daytime's going to be filled, but uh, we'll be back. We want to also put our last moves on Warriors of God. That'll free us up a table. I do have a uh, an opponent that answered my vassal ad. But unfortunately, if you watch my videos, <laughs> I've had bad. This is a whole other story. Vassal, I mean, I know not everybody's got time like me. But when I get into a game, I'm, I'm there to play. All right? I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. I've had some really good, I had my Russian front game, and he just, I and you, know, you never know what happens to these people. I mean, maybe the guy had an accident or something, <laughs> kicked the fuck, and it got killed. But uh, it's really weird that all of a sudden they're, they're just gone. So uh, I'm trying to do another Vassal game, but the thing of it is, the guy that answered my ad wanted to play Blitzkrieg. Well, if you look at my last attempt at a Vassal game, when I put up an ad, the guy wanted to play Blitzkrieg, which is all well enough and good. But... It took me an hour and a half or so to. That's a big game to set up. Well, I, and I set it up on the board. And I, even if you set it up on Vassal, it's going to take a while, unless it, unless I start you off that way. But it was an hour and a half wasted, and I rather sat around in Vassal room waiting, waiting, waiting. The guy never showed up. I think I did get it. Maybe it was. I think I did get an email from him maybe later on that day saying he was going to be late. You know, I'm not like that. <laughs> Don't waste my time. If you're going to be late, let me know. So I was kind of. You know, herky jerked about that, and sure enough, when I put up my ad now, th this guy comes up wanting to play Blitzkrieg. Well, I told him, I said, I, you know, I've had, and I had good luck with Vassal, and as a matter of fact, the last person that I had a game with wanted to play Blitzkrieg. <laughs> so I told him, I said, hopefully it wasn't you. <laughs> so I don't know about this this guy playing Blitzkrieg. I, and as a matter of fact, I did look through my past. Uh, contacts and emails from Vassal and he was on there. Not whether he was the one that didn't show up or not. I don't know, but yeah, you gotta watch Vassal. I like to get a table set up, but uh just for filming purposes, because on Vassal it's mostly a computer game. They do it on computer on the computer screen. Alright, I gotta get going. Got stuff to do. We'll be back for two more activations for our Can we survive the first wave? We're getting there. Be right back. Okay, we are back, and I uh, just want to say happy holidays. Holidays starting to come to an end. 
they should start for me. I think I, I, we started celebrating them a, probably about a day or so before Thanksgiving. At work, it's usually, yeah, at work, it's usually about a week or so before. I kind of get that holiday feeling, but, you know, it goes through, goes through Thanksgiving and all the way up till tomorrow. And after that, it's time to turn a page on a new year and get down to it. But it's been a great holiday season. I love it, man. I mean, it's kind of like a marathon for me. And then you, you come down to it, days get shorter, starts getting dark earlier to get home. And, and it's, it gets cold. It's time. I'm, I'm kind of like a, kind of like a bear. I hibernate during the winter. Yeah, we get all down that little snow, <laughs> make us a den, a lot of blankets and pillows, and wake me up in the spring. Oh, so happy New Year to everybody. We had a good year. Um, we're finishing off in a good way. We are playing some games, and uh, going to continue on with a little bit here more on this Lan Lanzarath uh, Ridge game. Then I want to hop over and play some Warriors of God and finish that one up. I do have another opponent on Vassal and he is wanting to play Central America. We will see how that goes. It's I'm told I told him that's gonna take about at least a week's preparation. <laughs> I gotta look at rules and everything on that, but we'll we'll definitely won't be playing no campaign game on that one. We'll check out the scenarios and work our way up and like I told him it'd be nice to have a gaming partner. And that's a good game to start off with, so we will definitely be able to size him up on that one. And like I said, that's gonna take a, that's gonna take some preparation. But uh, right now, we're trying to survive our first wave on this Lanzarath Ridge, and uh, we got two more defender uh, uh, actions to take. Now, uh, one thing I do realize with those new games I got, American America's War. And especially Empire of the Sun, which I've been watching a lot of. That looks like a good game. Definitely like that. I uh, didn't know it was so old, though. I, it, like I said, I think it came out in 2013. It's got a, uh, I think Callendale's got a video on it. You look at these videos, and it say like they're 11 years old or something. I'm like, oh, my God. I, or nine years old. I'm like, oh, shoot, I didn't know they've been playing that for that long. So, yeah. Empire of the Sun, uh, oldie, maybe considered. But goody. And, uh... Unlike Lanzarath, we just pretty well sit down and start playing the game. I don't think I'll be doing that with that game. <laughs> I don't think we'll be doing it with that game at all. Whew. And it don't look that bad. Like I said, I've been watching Mark on his uh, videos, playing at Callendale, and just getting a pretty well, you know, grip of what's going on. All right, now this one, like I said, we we're uh, first wave wasn't, I guess, all that bad. We've got a little bit of buffers here to clear that to clear it out. The only spot we don't have a buffer in is right here. So therefore, with my last, or one of my last actions, we're gonna go over here to Abrams. He's gonna do a combat action. He'll be rolling a, what we got there, a D8. Okay, well that's not too bad. The only thing is we gotta cross the line on that fire to get to this guy here. His uh, area value is a three. So we'll have to roll a four and above to uh, get up with a D8, which I guess is better than a D6. So this guy must be a better shot or something. So there you go. We are shooting from here to here. Want to roll a four or better on a D8. And where are my D8s? Here's a D8. Uh, D6. All right, we got D6. Four or better. Five. That'll do it. All right, that definitely helps, and that solidifies uh, my first turn, our first turns here. We definitely did what we wanted to do. Got a little buffer here. I mean, we could, he, theoretically, could pull out three cards and get right on up there and end the game, but we still have one more action left. So we want to do with it. We'll be right back. All right, I'm going to make a little note before we move on to our last action, defensive action. We had to flip him over to Exhausted. You can see our front line is pretty well exhausted, but we've done good. And uh, I was, it was a debate on this last action I got here, if I wanted to call in some intelligence. And uh, if you read the notes, I was right. That's what this is all about, is providing the rear with uh, what's going on. With the sudden offensive that was uh, not supposed to be. The front was supposed to be quiet, and the Germans beaten. But we will have, uh, I was going to use that spend that token now I would have to roll a five or six and that would have moved that up one instead I am going to 
go over here to uh, McConnell. He's in area two. Uh, area two. We'll put a used marker on him. He's going to fire a D8, and he wants to shoot it to this boy right here, who's in a five area. He's in the woods. Okay, I guess that little strip of woods is, uh, makes a difference. But to get this marker out of the way, what we're going to do yeah. is use what's called uh, the Inspire, a defender with an Inspire attribute designated by a star in their color. All right, now there are certain uh, limitations. That one there has, has to be Dustman. Dustman, Redman, and Springer can only provide a benefit to defenders of their squad, which is all good because we all got the same color. We're all buddies. I, he wouldn't be able to, Dustin wouldn't be able to do it for Queen. All right, but there's other ones. Buck and Sharp can benefit to any defender other than those that are, have the Inspire uh, attribute, which is, I guess... So at the same rank you can inspire because they know you're just a chump with little privates be looking up at you so <laughs> can't inspire a fellow uh, dude that knows what's going on I guess alright so Dustman will be inspiring McConnell I think it's a D8 mm -hmm. we'll see what that inspire does a defender with an inspire designate well, let me read this rather than a squad provides an additional die for the defenders in the same combat position during attack and adjust fire actions. So that'll work. So we get two D8s for uh, McConnell. And he'll flip over to Exhausted when we're done with that for the Dustman, inspiring him. In other words, he's telling him, You better kill that mofo or I'm going to throw you in the brink. That's what he's yelling. He's not, he's not inspiring. He's saying, he shoot, shoot him, or I'm going to shoot you. All right, we need a five or more. Two dice, D8s. We got it. All right, that clears off the rifleman. And uh, exhaust the old boy. And takes my last marker. One marker, two markers, three markers, four markers, and five, because we tried calling in artillery, but successfully. There you go. Well, that is it. We got uh, another wave. Take a break here when we come back. We'll see what the Germans throw at us for the last wave. Now, when we're done with this last wave, if we don't lose the game, uh, we have to flip all these guys over to their unexhausted side. So, it's pretty much par for the course. They get a little bit of break. Uh, yeah, you don't want to be a German soldier. You never want to be a soldier attacking a position anyway, especially back then. You would think we'd be back that. Or back or rather beyond that these days, but you look at what's going on over there in uh, Ukraine, and we're right back to 1918. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh my God, the human race. All right, we will be back. Uh, last wave for uh, our last last push of the first wave. And uh, can... Uh, U.S. side, hold on with a green commander, me. <laughs> My first game, so we'll see what's up. So far, so good, but like I said, it can end here real quick. This will tell. And uh, assault roll in place. And assault oh, back here with our six die. And we're going for area number six. Let me see, a rifleman. Area six will be this one all the way back here. So we will see how we do this here. Move him up from a nice little spot. This is a nice little hole here. Nobody can see you. So we'll move him up. Oh, no, hold on. He's here. We'll have to put the old boy. He don't have to move up. He moves up. He moves up, and he gets placed. So there you go. So far, so good. Number one card. Two more cards left. And, uh, well, all right, here we go. Roll in place again. Another six sided dice. We go with a four this time. A rifleman going for area four. Coming up this path. Coming up this path, and he is stocked. So everybody will be moving up one, starting with the officer. That's always good. Get going there, officer. <laughs> Hold on a second here. Is that what am I seeing? Oh, I can't have a net on my game. 
I thought it was maybe just on a screen. Ego. Ego. All right. Yikes. I'm a trash can. There you go. Uh, okay. A little flamethrower action. <laughs> I guess the, who, I can endure them now, although I do have a. Well, my girlfriend does have a vegetation and plants in there, but where's a bug come from this time of year? Although it has warmed up pretty pretty nicely. It was a really nice day today. Really nice night. Went and had us a nice dinner and out back. Oh boy, I'm telling you, I ain't a good meal. But what's going on here? I had uh, steak and lobster tail. Oh, could you just live off lobster tail? And it's probably the best dish you ever is or the best eats. My girlfriend can't eat fish. She loves it. But she blow up like a blowfish. All right, what are we going on here? We roll a four. Four. The old officer. Oh, do we have to move? Yep, we got to move on up. So the officer goes first. Get on up there, sir. <laughs> I love that. All right, well, he's a brave officer. He's going to get a medal if he lives. They get the old Iron Cross. All right, let's see here. We'll get some riflemen and place him here. Going after area four, that takes care of this one. So far, so good. We have hung on and not lost the game yet. What does the last card reveal? Assault. Roll in place again. Oh, hold on. I'm feeling things dropping here on my feet. I don't know if I'm losing pieces. Hold on, we'll be back. Okay, yep, sure enough. <laughs> uh, I don't know how long these things are going to last. Oh my goodness. I'm going to have to look on the floor after every game. All right, yeah, I'm not a big fan of a bunch of little pieces, I guess. I don't know. And I don't have no kids or really a dog to mess with, per se. So uh, what are we doing here? Last one, we'll roll one more die. Roll in place, and this is for, uh, oh. Uh, Falsemagger. Huh, Falsemagger. Well, that's what they all are called, so I guess that's just infantry, but there is a uh, different symbol here. Roll in place, one through six. He gets a six also. That can't be good. That can't be good. Let's grab him. What's his, uh, maybe an SG-42 or something there? Uh, some kind of assault rifle or assault gun. All right, uh, area six. Here you go. And uh, hopefully my screen's clean. It ain't clean on this end, but I think it is clean on that end. We got a buffer area, so we're good. We are good, so we move the officer up one. Everybody up one, up one, up one. And our first, I think this is our first assault, yeah. There was not another one of those on the board. That's our first one, so I guess the quality of the troops coming in here now. Getting a little bit better. And it's weird, because I shuffled those cards really good, but it's weird how, that, how it turns out like that. All right, well, that will be the last card. Yay! Big uh, congratulations. We will move on now and find out what we do at the end of the wave. The wave cards are gone. They're all drawn. And we are survived. We are, I thought we were doing pretty good. Looks pretty good to me. So, uh, and they're eliminated from here. That might be the way the game goes. Because if you got to have tactic cards to make it harder, to make it hard and harder, then maybe it is an easier game. We'll see what's up. Like I said, we won't be diving in like this quick uh, on Empire of the Sun or maybe Ward America maybe we might be able to get into that real quick but uh, Lanzarath Ridge uh, hats off it's a, a testament to how easy it is to start playing a game we just sat down and started playing although we have played a few DVG games before so if you know DVG games you'll have no problem with this one hope you guys enjoyed the video I'm going to spend some more time here on New Year's Eve playing the rest of this game I will not bore you with the details, but if you see anything interesting, we will let you back in. Uh, Happy New Year, everybody.